Unafraid Show, Reister or Wrong. It's your boy George Reister here today, and I brought and I brought the uh, the uh, wife back with me. We usually do the wife versus the expert, where we give um, everything from advice, talk about stuff that's going on, and also during uh, football season and during March Madness, we picked. Um, we picked against each other, and the husband, all, the expert, always dominates the wife. Wait, wait, as per always, it should be. Always? Except for one time. You except won for what? Once. Except for what? Bowl season. The college you, football bowl season, which you was won 42 one time. picks. 42 picks, and I whooped him by like 20. It was crazy. It was crazy, you guys. Listen, even a blind The expert dog, versus the husband, but even anyway. A, that's the only time you won. You, that you was lost like the like biggest se- one. That was doesn't the matter. biggest one. Doesn't matter. You you won the war and I you mean, won a war and now you want to act like you win the Super Bowl. Win the Super Bowl? I don't. I just you didn't win, win the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. I did win the Get Super Bowl. Get out of here. Get out of here. Do you know what is funny about about this whole situation is? You see how we're sitting here, right? And you see, so we we have lighting behind us and all that. And it's hilarious that Denisha's like, oh, really? You just want to make sure your lighting is good and not and not mine. <laughs> well, obviously, we are different complexions. And his complexion is needs a little bit different lighting than mine does. So I'm all super blown out, looking crazy, and he looks fantastic. But that's cool. And the funny part is, is that this regularly happens because Denisha likes to be on Snapchat. And Snapchat's <laughs> filters are racist. Yes, they yes, I said are. it. Snapchat's are. filters are racist. They can never find his face. Yeah, try being a dark-skinned dude <laughs> using Snapchat. It don't work out well. I would. I can't. It's not fair to say it's racist as much as it is. It's just. I well, maybe it is. It's treating dark skinned people poorly. Exactly. Exactly. The technology has not caught up to where it needs to be, and that's completely unacceptable. Like, like this is 2018. Like, there's no reason why Snapchat, who can get geo filters, can't get me and you in your little Snapchat. Uh, that's the th- complexion. That's why I don't do Snapchat. He gets all pissed off. Like, I'll be like, hey, there, let's take a selfie. And then the little ears don't pop up on him. And he gets Hell pissed. no. Yeah, because it's just, not, it's just not right. It's dirty. It's wrong. And it's not right. But where I wanted to start this conversation today is I got a question. Because everybody knows that I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning to watch the royal wedding. It was a big deal. I liked it for so many reasons that I've gone over. The the fact that Meghan Markle's from, she's an American, she's black, she's from uh, Baldwin Hills or Inglewood. Like, this is like a true, like, I mean, like, the the royal family have been historically kind of racist. Not not kind of racist, but... That's but, a big statement. But no, 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 no. I get it. It's in, just in, been in very his, white. Yeah. It's been white. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's, it's been very white Un, dominated. Unfiltered. Yeah. White. And and then the only time that there was somebody never else... never desegregated. Well, except for when <laughs> Princess Diana was, was dating Dodie Fayette, and they both ended up dead. So, you know. Wow. So, but anyway, so that's why I thought it was such a big deal. And here's the question that I got for you. I saw all women, right? Mm-hmm. Black women, white women, whatever it was, all women. Oh my God, this is such a true love story, princess. You go, girl, go get your man, right? <laughs> but a few days prior, Donald Glover, mm-hmm. the childish Gamb- Gambino, this is America, Atlanta, community, that Donald Glover. Mm-hmm. People found out that his baby mom and the lady he's with is white. And, and women everywhere, oh, really? Oh, really? He act like he's down for the cause. But but then praise Meghan Markle for marrying the white guy. I don't think it's quite that simple. My husband has a tendency to oversimplify things. I don't think it's that simple. It's also the fact that Meghan Markle, like, married a prince. That's different. He She went and married a prince. She is now a duchess. She's from Baldwin Hills, And she became a duchess. And this is the part that warmed my heart. It was so clear how like amazingly in love they were. And to me, that was the part that I liked about the royal wedding was that he's just looking at her, just I, you know, hearts in his eyes, floating up saying like, you look amazing and just. Like everybody else does at their wedding. So that it's just nice to see. I see. It's just it's, nice to see. That's okay, what we so, like. So why you, he cried a little bit in a way? No, I didn't. Yeah, he so, did. Voice so, cracked, all that. It so why cute. when 
Donald Glover is walking with with his lady, is it then because he made the This Is America video? Well, first of video. all, she ain't no princess. She's not no princess. Okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not I'm, saying there's an excuse for it because there's no excuse for saying like he's you know, not. He's, she's white. No, like, I'm saying so. I'm how is he not down for the cause? How is he not down for the cause? I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that, but I think you're comparing an apple to an orange and saying, "Oh, why are they different?" So, so it's everything, not the same. so everything changes when you when you, when you marry a prince. Kinda. You don't think so? You don't think so? I mean, there's only a couple princes. This, this that's right. Happen. There is literally one like prince. I mean, there's like Saudi Arabian princes and stuff like like that, but they're not as notable. This, as, I mean, this is a big deal. That's the that's. I, what that's it is. why I got up at four o'clock in the morning to watch it. But so I just all I'm saying is, this is not the same. It is not right for sure, for sure, to sit there and and say, oh, why did Donald Glover marry a white lady? Because he loves her. <laughs> That's what that's who he wants to be with, and that's fine. But okay, so we'll go into this then. The I know that there are a lot of people out there who say, "Listen, I should have put eyeliner on." I love. Uh, I want my daughter or my son to marry a a great person, somebody who's going to treat them right, love them, take care of them, be a good mate, whatever it is. But I prefer them to be. X, Y, or Z. I prefer them to be black, white, uh, Asian. What, Do you what, feel like that? Huh? Do you feel like that? I used to feel like that. Okay. I, I I used to feel like I want my daughter, the, who's, the, who's the oldest one. Mm-hmm. She's, eight, she's 18. I used to be like, all right, well, I want her to marry a great dude, treat her right, all this stuff. But if he just so happens to be black, I'm like, cool with that. But now, but now I'm like, all right, look, I see how people are just not good people in general. So, <laughs> so I'm good. like, you've had lots of experience. So I'm like, <laughs> listen, just just give me the best thing that you got. Just give me the best man. I don't care if he got one arm, one leg, if he's pink, purple, whatever. Just treat my daughter right, and my you son right treat my son right. You right about be that. a good wife. Be what whatever. Just be great to them. All I care about. I care like literally nothing about race. Literally nothing. Okay. I care nothing about race. I care that he's smart. He's hardworking. He has high integrity. He treats my daughter right. Mm-hmm. I'd prefer he's good looking. You know, I want to keep. I want to keep the. I want to keep the good looking going. You know what I'm saying? Why though? Why <laughs> good looking is different than black. I want him to be black. Oh, what 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 is the difference between that and I want him to be good looking or I want him to be super tall? Well, you you're the one who's big on tall, not me. Be- <laughs> okay, exactly. Look, you, look his look. family has a thing about you got to have kids with a tall person. It which makes I get it. It makes sense because in in the world, tall people win more than more than short people. Like like it's just the way you're looked at. It's just different. Like when you're bigger, you command a bigger presence. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can be a little intimidating. I would to people say there are some, advantages sometimes. to being tall for sure. Yeah, that but, advantage and women, that advantage does not outweigh any of the other things that I think are important for the for our children to marry. I agree. And I am currently praying for their spouses that they are these type of people. So there is that. <laughs> and it, and this was funny because this came up because our our daughter who's eighteen she loves K-pop. I mean, loves K-pop like like if 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 somebody was overly sensitive, they would they would be like, oh, she's a she's a cultural appropriator because no, I mean, I mean, I'm saying she doesn't like dress like that. I know, but change her appearance. I know, but she watches K-pop more. I mean, she watches Korean dramas. She's learned how to speak Korean. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with it. But I'm saying that that people who take stuff way too far. Mm-hmm. It was a girl who wore a kimono to her prom and they were like, she's a, a cultural appropriator. No, she liked the damn dress. Well, I think there is, there's, I mean, cultural appropriation is kind of changing your appearance to be of another culture. She just wore a dress. It's not, it's not like she changed her eyes or something like, like that or like changed <laughs> anything like, like, like to make her look like something else. I get it. She just I get changed. It. I, and, and all dresses are beautiful. I personally love like Indian wedding dresses. I think those are Fly, like fly. If we ever renew our vows, I may just rock a little Indian number. 
Oh man, people like are, it is people fly. are gonna go I they are gonna go irate on you. They're gonna be like Ask me if I care. Do I care at all? Not even a little bit. Anybody yeah, paying yeah. for my dress? Anybody paying for my dress? <laughs> Anybody got any money on my dress? Because if I will wear what I want to wear when we renew our vows. All right, well, means. you guys are watching the Unafraid Show, the wife versus the expert, George Reister here. So we're talking about uh, race a little bit and marriages and who you can marry. Uh, th and then I got this comment and I told this guy, uh, Jeremy, that I would address this on the Unafraid Show today. Uh, he tweeted me. He said, you recently had you recently debated a little about a race subject. I would like to ask you a question. My 16 year old daughter started working three days ago and she came to me and told me a young black man that works there came up to her. His immediate question to her was, do you date niggas? She told him she had a boyfriend. He didn't use the N word. George did. The, but I'm just saying. No, no, no. Some no, people, I'm about, some people the, know that the boy said it. I but, understand that, but oh, he didn't say correct. it to you. Okay. He proceeded to tell her, you know a nigga would change your life, plus several other things. How is she supposed to take that as a father? I find it unacceptable. So here's, the, I'll, I'll go first with this. As a mother, I find it unacceptable. Yes, it, it is completely <laughs> unacceptable. How, however. Period. Next how, topic. No, hold on. No, 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 no. <laughs> there, we got to break this down from different angles. First of all, that means that your daughter's probably attractive, which is which is a good thing. Um, the the uh, the uh, second part is is there's an element of especially with young black men, mm -hmm. and probably until they get like 35, 40 even, and sometimes it continues past past then where there's like this like like this real nigga thing, and it's like you have to. How did you overcome your your inner real nigga? Uh, it, it 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 still po pokes his head out some <laughs> sometimes. And what and what that means is that you're trying to, uh, it's it's your confidence, it's the way you walk, talk, and all of that. But the the thing that I don't like about it in the situation is, is that it degraded his daughter. Like in in, in terms, well, he referred to him. He degraded himself. That can I get to that point next? Number I one, she, that's what he I, did. I wish she had said to him because I I use the word nigga, and, and I don't like it. I know, and but it's a it's a it's an ethnic colloquialism that is used as a term of endearment. You when know I better. Use it. You know better. I do. I do. <laughs> but. Like, I, I wish she had said to him, because I always talk to, I know it probably sounds hypocritical on some, on some level, but I always talk about why being black has to always be associated with the worst things in life, like with, with the negative things mm -hmm. and all this. And I kind of felt like the way he said it did that. So I wish he had told, told him, oh, I, um, well, you know, it could, could be different if you, um, if you, refer to yourself as something positive a black uh, a good black man out here doing his thing you know if uh i mean he didn't even have to refer to being a good black man he should have been just been a good man will change your life that's what he could have said Co correct but the but the idea th this is the or she did say she had a boyfriend he could respect that oh i'm telling my story okay no so but the worst know. yeah but the worst thing though is that a, he didn't respect the fact that she had a boyfriend. Number one. And so that, that's and where B, she, he degraded himself. Because just being a black man is not, doesn't make sure that this is going to like revolutionize this woman's life. Yes, it's different with being uh, with different people because there are different cultures, different things they do, all of this stuff. I get it. But just because he's black, that's not like life changing <laughs> revolutionary to her. I had something in my mouth. Uh, so I, I would encourage your, your daughter to speak up and just say something to him, call him, call him out about it. Be like, yo, first of all, I already told you I got a dude. And second of all, I don't degrade your, yourself. Like you're more than your skin color. You are, what, what else do you have to offer? Yeah, that could, that could have been a teaching moment for her. But what I would say is yesterday I had a guy come up to me. Um, I, he asked, I, we talked about some real estate stuff and then he asked for my business card. I gave him my business card and he's like pronouncing my name, Danielle Hostin Reister. 
And, and he was like, Reister. And I was like, yeah, that's my married last name, right? After this, he asks me out. And I'm like, that's rude, right? Yep. To me, I honestly was offended that a man would even, first of all, he was married too. Number one, that a, a married man would approach me, number one, and think that there was a shot in hell. Number two, that he thought, I'm married, but he still approached me and he's married. Like, it was just doubly offensive. So I was like, very like, and this is the second time this has happened in like a month. A married man who knew I was married, confirmed I was married. Did you give enough vibes or something? I think I'm just fly, babe. Like, I'm just <laughs> like, he's like, I'm going to shoot my shot no matter what. But no, seriously, I think that, that the pro- there's a problem with that. And you know what you said to me? What? You said... It must have worked for him before because yeah. men only do what works for them. Correct. So this little dummy is approaching dumb women and it must have worked for him. Yes. Men do things or that work. Or it was modeled for him, which is actually more likely Here's that somebody saw that, that he saw that this little conversation happened okay. and, and he Here's was like, oh, it's going to work. Men do things that work. Like, like men do a lot of dumb things that don't work. Um, I'm talking about as a as a whole. There are some people. I mean, there there there's some men who walk up and say crazy things to women. Check your uh, fa- Facebook thing to see if anybody coming in. Um, <laughs> there are some men who don't do the right. I mean, who don't do things that work. Mm-hmm. But in general, men do things that work. And whether it's driving an expensive car. Living in a dope house, you know, showing being flashy, whole mm-hmm. lot of lot of money, whatever it is, these things work to get women. Right. Okay, would you would you agree with that? I want. I don't know. I don't know if I I agree with that. I mean, of course, well, I think they no, do it because a, they want to they no, no, want to get with women. A, yes, correct. But there's a reason why men. But drive. there's not a, It works because it gets women. Because it, it doesn't get all women. It doesn't get it all women, but women. but it gets women. It like, gets some women. It gets women. Period. <laughs> and that's where I'm sitting up there. Like, I'm like, okay, like how on earth? Like, well, I didn't understand why you were so necessarily offended. I mean, I get why you were offended because after you told him that you were married, mm-hmm. but, and you were like all offended. Like, I can't believe this dude did that. I'm like, this is no, what they I'm do not because offended they at shoot all their if a shot. Guy asked me out. I'm not offended at all. If a guy asked me out, I say I'm married. But if I say I'm married, and then you ask me out, now I'm a little offended. And then if I find out you're married, I'm offended for your wife. Like now I'm now we got a problem because now I'm mad for her. I get that. That's that's all I'm saying. I'm not I'm not offended if a guy's like, hey, what's up, girl? And then he doesn't know I'm married, and I tell him, and then he's like, all respect, no problem. And that was the problem that I have with that boy approaching your daughter is that he wasn't showing her respect, number one, or showing himself respect. Oh, somebody sent in a good question on your Facebook. We we were talking about Meghan Markle being married to Prince Harry, right? And how Donald Glover, how that was like this, oh, this great love story. Go, go, girl. You get your man, girl. But then Donald Glover is with a white woman and people are like, oh, really? He made, this is America. He's fronting. He's really not down for the, for the cause. So that's what people said about right. Donald Glover. But then... The question is, is if Donald Glover was a prince, would he catch the same hell? I think he would catch more. I absolutely agree. Okay, so what? 100%. So so why are you celebrating? I'm not saying that he should. I'm saying that he would. Yeah, and and I'm just asking women out there in general, why in the hell? First of all, you get mad about my white boyfriend, so I don't even want to hear it. (laughs) I've had a white boyfriend. I've had a white boyfriend, and he's like, oh, you remember that boyfriend that you had? So he always has something to say. So you, why don't you ask yourself? Because I don't get mad at all your previous other race girlfriends. I would not. I don't even care. I don't have a problem with Donald Glover. But you have a problem with me having had a white boyfriend. No, I just think it's weird. Share it. I just think it's weird. But why? Huh? Why is it weird? They got a little pink thing. It's weird, man. It's weird. Help I'm me serious. All. Help me, y'all. <laughs> Pray for me. I'm joking. It's funny though. Um, <laughs> one of the last things we got up today <laughs> is um. Oh, last last night. I know we keep bringing our our hygiene into this, but first of all, you guys make sure you swipe up, share the feed, like the feed, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show. And this is Reister or Wrong. My wife at Denisha Dan Danielle and me George Reister, the expert on all things. Um, 
So last, so we've been going to this doctor, right? How do how do you d- describe what the doctor is? Neuro- um, well, what she calls it is like nutrition response therapy, and it's basically like it's like Eastern medicine. They they test you by like they move your arm around and see if it locks, and they test different organs, and then she gives you um, natural supplements to help these organs work. And it was highly, highly recommended by a friend of mine. And I will tell you, this girl, you look at her, she looks amazing. And she was telling me all of her health issues before, and now she looks amazing. So I was like, well, you know what? I'm not sleeping well. I gained some weight. I'm like trying to figure out what's going on. My husband's got inflammation all the time. He's in pain. So I was like, let's give this a shot. I go there. We've been doing this how long, would you say? Month. A month. Sleeping like a rock. I feel 10 times better just energy wise. I mean, obviously it's kind of a 12 week program, so I don't know how long it's working, but if you're interested in something like that, um, and there's nothing, we don't get any promotion for this. So this is like honest for us is three angels, health and wellness. She's got a Facebook page and she does workshops. We have literally changed everything. All of our deodorants, our soaps, our cleaners, everything has become all natural. And it's still a process because we're still getting rid of a lot of things, but we've become more aware of electromagnetic fields. We have these little things on our cell phones now that kind of neutralize the bad energy. Um, But I can tell you, I feel a difference in my body and I feel great. Okay, so... What's the question? I I am afraid to tell people this just in general because... This This is you overcoming your real... No, 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 no. It just has to do with people judge you because when you get to talking about electromagnetic fields and stuff like that, people look at you like you're crazy, like, like you're Chuck from, from Better Call Saul. Well, they should Google. They should Google then. Go ahead and Google. I know, but I'm just saying like we, like we sound like doomsday prepper slash, (laughs) um, (laughs) like, uh, slash, slash people who think the world's going to end all of this. But the thing is, is that so we've introduced this to the kids <laughs> and we have a blended family. So they get certain things from over there. They get certain things from with with us. And <laughs> when we talked about it, the uh, my oldest son, uh, Damon, who's 12, he was like, Dad, come on now. Like, you don't you don't believe that this is real, that this stuff is actually cancer causing, do you? I was like, uh, I don't see why not. <laughs> I don't see why. I mean, this, this is one of those things like, what if you're, I mean, it's one of those like, what if you're right? What if, what's right? I mean, I, obviously, is right? obviously less chemicals, more organic things make more sense because if God created it, it's good. But when you start genetically modifying it and all this stuff with the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything. There's a else, lot of things in this world that God had, God obviously had a, a hand in it because he created the people who did it, but he didn't create it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's a lot of bad things out there. I know. I'm saying that you, but you modify. So you can't them. say that. Even still, even still, this is the thing. It's kind of like going to heaven. Like how people are like, well, I don't know if there really is a heaven, and it, and it's like, well, what if you're wrong? <laughs> like, what if you're wrong? What if you don't get saved, and you die, and you're like, oops, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read the Bible. I mean, that's what happens. And honestly, cancer causing things are everywhere, like everywhere. And there are links, there are studies, but there are lobbyists who really kind of want you to be dull and not in the know and kind of just take whatever is given to you and give you a diagnosis at some point and say, sorry, I don't know where you got it from, but you got it. And now you need chemo and you need all of this to get rid of it. So to me, I believe in Western medicine, but I also believe in Eastern medicine. I agree. I think they know they know stuff that Western medicine doesn't know. Just like Western medicine has some some advantages to it as well. But there's nothing wrong, and I am a results oriented person. I have experienced results, so that's why I'm doing it. So that is it. Like it doesn't even matter what anybody has to say about it. Tony, you are 100 percent right. You do have to believe in energy because uh, Newton's law, everything has an equal and opposite reaction, Mm -hmm. everything. So, yes. And um, what? What? What's that? Oh, uh, your your, your husband fat? (laughs) Tony, of all people. How dare you? How dare you? 
Um, so but he's about but, to be fine. Watch, and you guys are gonna be trying to find about, these? about to be. Well, you know, you know what I'm saying. I've been pulling. Um, so anyways, uh, <laughs> I, I, I got a question. Um, oh, Scott, Scott, Scott Maddox is an, is a non believer. Science medicine is the only medicine. Okay, you can you can believe that if you want to. There's a there's a reason why people survived this long without without it. And um, like, I think you have to use a combination of both. But I got a real question for for you. Hmm. Who are you right now? Because the, the same person that I started dating mm -hmm. is not the same person that shows up in bed at night. The the person <laughs> you got your nerve. The, you have so much nerve. The woman I dated. Hmm. Never, never farted in the bed. Yes, and did. and didn't use my toothbrush. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And and now when I get in the bed, my like even it happened again last night. <laughs> She's laying in the bed. I'm like, what are you doing? I said, excuse me. <laughs> I don't even understand. Why. No, I, I don't understand how First you didn't all, used to do it, and now you do. I hope that somebody who knows you in real life is watching this because if anybody knows my husband, you know for a fact he has the most disgusting smelling farts and bowel movements that you may have ever experienced. Really? All that though? Yes. Seriously. Seriously. So you've been farting. Call me out like that? You just call me out, but I don't even care. I, I okay, care nothing on. about it. Everybody farts. That's stupid. So to me... The fact that you have anything to say about somebody else farting is like comical. It's actually hilarious. And you, if you think me using your toothbrush two or three times is so disgusting, we can talk about all your disgusting habits. All of them. Because he's got very long list of disgusting habits. Would you like to talk about those? I'm asking. You you do a fabulous job at this because you were a communication major and you are uh, <laughs> you you like to deflect and redirect the conversation very well. So I asked you a question. So for the Who first so the first few years of our relationship, you never farted in front of I me. I think I farted in front of you many times. No, 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 no. But you not, had these like so, hearts in your eyes at so, that time, so you just maybe no. like ignored the fart or no, something no, no. like so, that. So so I'm asking. But now you see why, the real me. What, what happened between then and now with your with your body that now you you do this? Honey, I've been farting forever. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh hell. I mean, come on. You you ain't even <laughs> going to make You sense. ain't going to keep it. You think nobody around. you think people don't fart? They have like little just you know? The last thing we got up for today on The Wife versus The Expert, I figured it would be a good breakup today on The Unafraid Show. We've talked about race, we've talked about everything else and um we talked when we were in Napa not too long ago about my my wife has a a um a very like a, a habit of when we go out of town she seems to leave her toothbrush and so she she's used my toothbrush which we've now stopped because that's gross but <laughs> but when we were going to the doctor that that we were talking about they talked about cleaning your belly button and. <laughs> And another one of your nasty well, just sorry, habits. sorry, not cleaning your, your your belly button, but rubbing this oil in your belly button. And I'm sitting there like, I'm and, gonna throw up. Everybody, and, you're about to throw up. And mind you, it's something weird about my my belly button that when I touch my belly button, it feels like I'm gonna throw up. So I never touch my 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 belly button. And and in the shower, he never touches his belly button. Never. And so when I Even had to put the, the oil cloth. in the belly button i like i was like oh wow literally I, I was like oh wow it's dirty in there and that got me to thinking i was like do people really clean their belly button yes! how often oh, wait hold up don't act like you do it all the time you I, like i said at least once or twice a year at least and i'm always rubbing like cleaning my body but i make a specific effort to clean out my belly button do you know how long he said it's been for him that since he cleaned his belly button how, God, only, how long do you think only it been? god knows how long never <laughs> he's never no no his I'm, belly button. I'm i'm not gonna go with never but well when did it happen? i mean like specifically cleaning it never N not that i remember never 
Don't act like probably the last person to clean your belly button was your mother. <laughs> Man, get out of here. <laughs> and wait, don't act like you said you do it all the time. You said you do it like once or twice a year. Yes, that's a lot of times that you've missed. If you had washed your belly button, cleaned it out specifically once or twice a year, you would not have n- nothing like that. First of all, it doesn't collect a lot, but it does collect. So that disgustingness that came out of his belly button, bleh, bleh. you didn't even see it. Bleh. Hush up. <laughs> you, really? guys, you guys uh, probably stunk too get out of here I didn't smell it though <laughs> um, you guys thank you guys for joining in for the unafraid show today the wife versus the expert we got a bunch of great things coming up the unafraid show.com will be up next week all type of great articles up there download the podcast on iTunes or tune in and uh, make sure you share the feed and then look out for uh, right or wrong in a little bit today because the NFL did something colossally stupid today uh, with making players stand for the anthem. Just absolutely awful. Um, you guys, make sure you like the feed, share the feed again. Tell a friend about the Unafraid Show. Appreciate you joining us. And we're going to, and she's yeah. going to get her butt kicked again in football season and everything else that we do. Mm-hmm. Peace out. Catch you guys later.